Putting more and more content out onto social media is rarely a bad thing. And the only time really that it could be detrimental is when you're only focused on the quantity and you're not focused at all on the quality of your content. I'm going to show you guys an easy way that you can remember how to keep good quality of your content, of your videos, especially your clips, and also do it with ease. Guys, welcome back to the Mr. Tux channel. And today what we're going to be going over is how you can keep up with the quality of other content creators better than about 95% of them at the same time as keeping up the quantity of content and videos that you're putting out there. Let's get into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this down. I'm going to show you how we utilize the stream tools that all of us have access to. And then also some ones that you might not yet have, but are free and easy to use. But first, tell me if this sounds familiar. When you go and stream for hours and hours, and then you go back through your VODs looking for those funny moments or for like where you hit that good shot, or if you and your chat had like a deep conversation and you're looking for those to highlight or clip and then you do that and download those and then post them directly to Twitter or Instagram. Does that sound familiar? You put it out there, right? More content, more viewers. Makes sense, right? Not always. If you're just taking where you just hit that one good shot and then just directly uploading it to Twitter, yeah, people will see it, they'll get a kick out of it, but it's so much easier to watch by just doing something so, so simple. So first, what we're going to talk about is I'm going to show you a tool in Twitch here so that you guys can work smarter, not harder. And this is very, very easy. And it's for when you are trying to find those specific moments, like that funny moment or that sick shot. Very, very easy. You don't need a stream deck and you don't need to make a key binding for this. All you need to do is go to your stream manager on the right hand side where it has all those extensions. You can see that one of them is at a place marker on your VOD. So when you go back through and you look at your VOD, say you place five of those markers inside a stream. Well, then you'll see five lines for five timestamps in the past stream. And now you can go back and you can even add one and give it a comment. This was where I hit the shot. This was the moment where this kid said this joke, or this is the conversation that chat and I had about making Twitter and content videos easier to make. This is such a useful tool because you don't just have to hit a clip button and then a window will pop up and then you got to go through and see if like it actually got the correct timestamp. Instead, you can go through and make a custom highlight and then use that. Then you download this clip and this is where the fun begins. Normally, you'll just take this clip, download it and upload it straight to Twitter. Let me share two tips of advice. First one being when you upload this to Twitter, normally you're doing it like right after stream is done, right? You're losing so many potential viewers. I can't explain because when you do this, what you end up doing is you end up putting off all these people when they go to click on your channel they're gonna see that you are not live they go to your channel you're not live they're not gonna come follow for that specific reason they think that you just put out that content and then that's the end of it and then there may not even take a second look at it what you should be doing is taking this and uploading it right before you go live either 30 minutes or 10 minutes right before you go live and then when they click on that link which you should add into like a subtweet or an added tweet or reply tweet to the first initial video they're going to click on your link and then they will see you live now this is where the quality comes in because instead of just uploading that raw clip that raw footage from your vod do something interesting with it first people can watch this whenever you want to spice this up you want to give it some flair you want to do something special with this and you can do it for free and it's so easy first you need to go and you need to go download this free software davinci resolve you can do so many things with this free version of this video editor and because i know very little about it compared to Stuart. I'm going to hand this off over to him so that he can share with you guys exactly how to put your clips into this software and how to make them look extra fire. Hey guys, my name is Stuart or Stu. We're blur on socials since I uh, never get a chance to plug myself. So 
right there. Speaking of plugging yourself, I'm gonna show how you can make your clips look super freaking awesome and plug your stream to attract more viewers for when you are about to go live. So let's get into it. Wait, that's what Tux usually says. Let's do it. I'm just gonna show you how to edit this. All right, so right now we're in DaVinci Resolve. So we're just going to drag this little old clip, drag it into the old timeline, and we got this going. The audio is just a tad off of the video itself. Sometimes this will happen with Twitch. It has a weird way of unsyncing stuff. So basically what I have to do is just make sure that his exclamation here oh my. lines up. So what we're gonna do is unlink these clips by going here, just right clicking, hitting link clips, and that just undoes it so it's not linked anymore. Then I'm gonna drag just a little bit. There we go. Oh my. So that works a little bit better. Now, obviously we want to accentuate this shot a little bit more. So let's see what we can do to show that off a little bit. So one thing we can do is add a little slow motion. So we can slow this down and watch as he just slowly takes this shot. We don't want the sound to be slow because then it'll be super weird and like whoa, really garbled and stuff like that. We don't want that. We're gonna cut around where the shot takes place. Let's say like right as he starts to go out of the scope. So we'll cut right there, move this back. We wanna give this a little bit of room so that it has the space to have that slow-mo. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna highlight the clip and do change clip speed and then we can do let's try like i don't know like 50 percent something like that okay we'll go with 51 that's fine all right let's stretch this out a little bit so what i'm going to do with the sound here is try and find just one part that's not going to sound all jumbly basically we're just going to delete uh this first little part that's where the shot is and we want to just have that we're gonna see if we can line this up with when the shot happens and then we're gonna end it right here where the sound cuts and then we'll move these up. Something we can add here is some sort of like sound effect to keep up the intensity of this moment. So literally just looking up slow motion sound effect, I found something like this. So you can just download that. You wanna make sure that like anything that you use, you make sure is copyright free so you don't get any band hammers. All right, so now that we got that sound effect in there, I'm gonna drag it down here, make sure that it's nice and trimmed up so that we don't have to deal with all this blank sound. So let's, that sounds pretty good. I wanna see what the end of this sounds like though. I want to have this sound that's going back into normal time be present as well. Now we're gonna drag this back and see what, what that sounds like. It seems like we definitely want that to come in a little bit earlier. So we're gonna trim this and move it just a little bit like that. Let's see what that sounds like. Oh my. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, it zooms back into normal time right as he starts talking. There's two critical reactions here. First, he's like, oh my, right? And then, and then he does this like hands thing. I think it'd be funny if there was some sort of like police thing here where he's like getting arrested or something because that's what it looks like. I also was thinking of adding like a text being like, I promise I'm not hacking or something like that. So maybe we can make this kind of a minor zoom and I'll explain what that is. And then for the next one, we'll have like a full face zoom. For what I was talking about with the minor zoom, we want to go into the inspector. All right, so we have this part selected the oh my part we're gonna do just a little bit of a zoom so we're just gonna zoom in a little bit and then we're gonna move over here and then over here so the reason why i call this a minor zoom is because it's not fully on his face but it's closer to his face so it gives that effect of being closer and it makes the eye go to his face cam but it's not covering up the whole screen oh my so next we go into the arms we could just cut out just a little bit of this so that he's beginning the process of doing it so let's cut here that's just showing like the action of him putting his hands up so obviously for this part I want to have the full zoom so we see the full effect of him. Plus there's nothing on screen to look at anyways. I don't know how long I want it. Just long enough for people to be able to read the text that's gonna be next to his face. Something that I like to do is just like say the text that I'm gonna be putting there just out loud as if I'm, I'm reading it. I promise I'm not hacking. Okay, so that's basically how long it took for me to read it. So now we're gonna delete the rest of this because it doesn't matter. We want the clip to be as short as possible so that it can fit on Twitter. So this part is gonna be the full zoom. This whole clip is selected. We want to zoom in pretty far here and then position it 
down to where his cam is. Just to make this a little bit more dynamic since he is moving his arms, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set a keyframe on the end of this for both the zoom and position. You have to make sure you do both because it's gonna be a little wonky if you only do one of them. So then we go to the beginning of this and we're gonna make it just a little bit zoomed out. So this isn't gonna be the full can but it is a little bit zoomed out so that we have that motion we want it in the corner just so none of the black screen on the outside of the actual video shows that way it just doesn't show during the zoom so that should be at the end that takes up the full screen cool and maybe we can have the text move a little bit as well all right so we're gonna drag it on the timeline there i promise i'm not Hacking. All right, we definitely want it to be outlined as well. So we need the stroke option and it's already on black, which is good. All right, yeah, so we're gonna have the size of the stroke at one. To make this move a little bit, we're going to go into the video section and just try to do the same thing that we did before. So we're gonna add these keyframes. So we're gonna have that zoom effect happen again. So let's see what that looks like. Cool, so it kind of moves with him. I do want to fix that font because we can't see the I'm. So this exact strategy we're going to be using for the small intro we're going to make for this because when you're scrolling through Twitter, sometimes videos autoplay. And so we can add something that will like catch people's attention and then go into the actual content itself. We're just going to drag all of this a whole second here. So now I have all this room to do stuff with. So what we can do is take a screenshot from his reaction here because we're gonna have a talking bubble, a little speech bubble. We wanna make sure that he's like talking, making some sort of talking. And so we can have the speech bubble showing that. If we want this shot, in order to be able to put back in the timeline, we need to go over to color, right click it, and then grab still. We're gonna right click and then export and we're gonna save it. Now we have that, but we want to slowly zoom in to that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into our inspector, set these keyframes, go to the end, set a couple more. This is the weird thing. I think what we have to do is move the keyframe just a little bit before the end here so that we can actually see what it's doing because in this frame, it'll just show us what the next thing is. Don't know why it does that. It's pretty much consistent for every editing software. Just be careful of that when you're moving it and it doesn't seem like it's moving. It's definitely looking at the next frame for some reason. This is where we wanna start and then we wanna end up somewhere just a little bit more zoomed in. And we also kind of maybe want to do a little bit of rotating. So we're gonna add that as well. So if we go back to the first keyframe, we're gonna add that. So maybe just a little like, you know, turn here. Maybe just angle it a little bit like that uh, so that it kind of does like a ooh, dynamic rotate zoom there. All right, so now we got the speech bubble here. So now we're going to see if we can adjust it. Just going into clip attributes, I flipped it with this button right here just to make sure that it would be lined up with tux. We're gonna make sure it's just as short as the photo itself. I'm gonna make sure that it's the same kind of proportion that it was. Okay, that looks pretty good. I was a little bit wrong about the design that we're going for here. So we're just going to take out the talking bubble and put in a little thinking bubble because we're doing something a little bit different than I originally intended. Mr. Tux, question mark. All right, so that's gonna be the bottom. We're gonna find the Huntsman logo. Just because of where we had to put the logo, now we're gonna have to readjust the text just a little bit. So just center it right underneath the logo. So that should work pretty well. So then we're gonna have to redo them both for this frame here. So let's size the Huntsman logo first. And of course, as I forgot, we're gonna have to add the rotation angle for both of these. It is a little shaky, but that's about as good as we can do with that. That's gonna auto play on Twitter. And then we go right into the clip with the slow-mo. Oh my. One thing I did wanna add just a little bit for like more of the advanced editors is we're gonna find a green screen police lights effect. All right, so the weird thing about getting rid of all this green is to go over to color and then we click on this dropper here so we get qualifier we're then gonna switch this to 3d and we're gonna go up here uh alt s and add a node and then we're just gonna draw where we don't want the green so obviously it's blocking out the lights and things like that but we want those in there so what we're gonna do is go to invert and then we're gonna see that so there's a way we can clean that up and we'll do that in just a second but now we have to actually link these so what we're gonna do is we're going to add alpha output and then we're going to drag and connect it right there. 
All right, so now that looks pretty good. We might have to decrease the opacity on this. Let's see if we can also like do a little bit of around it and around that as well. That doesn't look too bad, honestly. It does give that little police effect. That's just an extra advanced tip. Obviously, you don't have to do something like that. So now one last thing, we're gonna add our Twitch outro so that we can plug the Twitch at the very end so people can see where to go right after watching this clip. So we're gonna add the Twitch animation made by yours truly. And we wanna make sure that this very last bit of green is keyframed out. We're gonna add a little marker here too. That's, you do that with M so that we can line it up right here. Again, we're gonna go over to color and make sure that we get some of this nasty out. What we're gonna wanna do is as this slides to the left, right about here, we're going to start to add the text. So this is where you guys are gonna put whatever sample text that you want for your channel, obviously. So for me, I'm going to be putting Mr. Tux. Or should I plug myself? We're gonna plug myself. We're just gonna put slash and then blur. So we want that to slowly appear right here. For the opacity, we wanna go over to the video section. We're gonna add that keyframe. It's gonna land right here on this spot. So we want it to be at full opacity, but definitely need to make it smaller. We want it to start at zero. So there we go, it fades in. And there it is. Thank you guys and send it back over to Tux. So now you guys are professional editors. You're putting out content that is 95% better than any other Twitch streamer out there right now. And also we're gonna be keeping this uh, outro around that Stuart showed you guys. It's gonna be for free. And if you guys want that, it's gonna be in the Discord channel. And uh, there's gonna be a link to that down in the description down below. And if you guys ever wanna come see me live, if you have more questions about this specifically, you can come follow the channel. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and most Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. I'll leave a link to that down in the description as well. And until next time, you guys, keep busy. Oh! What? Are you on the car? Yep. No way. I downed him. I downed this kid. He's right there, crazy. Oh my gosh, how did we just do that?